Well, hi everyone, this is Don Smith and welcome to the first of what I hope to be many monthly video blogs, instructional type video blogs for 2018. Really excited this year. We have a lot of things planned. Uh, today is going to be one on processing. Um, we're going to do some on cameras, settings. Um, we're going to also take you out on location with us. So I'm venturing more boldly into the world of video, learning more as I go, and kind of fun putting these things together and sharing some knowledge with you. Uh, today, I would like to show you how I put an image together that was captured this past Thursday over along the Big Sur coast um, around sunrise time, actually about 50 minutes past sunrise. And we had one of the biggest, well, the biggest winter swell of the year come through. Uh, typically, our swells come out of the northwest, but this one came up from the southwest, came up over Hawaii and up towards us. So I wasn't really sure how it was going to hit the reefs and affect it, but uh, got some massive waves. It was a 19-foot swell with 20-second duration. And what that means is, if you can imagine within each swell set, there is a set of waves and they're not restricted by the swell height. They can be bigger or lower. And uh, we were getting waves up over 30 feet. In fact, uh, after the end of the shoot, after about two and a half hours, I had two that I had to estimate at about 35 to 40 foot range based on the rocky promenade I was standing on. And they kind of exploded and went up over my head and got me and the cameras all wet. Took that as a sign it was time to get out of there. So, uh, as I was shooting prior to sunrise, I'm going to show you, I, I knew the sun was going to crest over the Santa Lucia range, and we had a lot of mist in the air, but I thought, you know, it'd be kind of fun if I, if I could put two images together where I could get the sun starring, and I did not have my uh, grad filters with me. Um, and then, you know, as the sun gets in that position, you, you would need to have the surf just perfectly hitting the rocks and it just happened to be a little calmer at that time so I waited after the sun got up and then here's my second shot as we had another um, uh, set of waves come through and start crashing and, and to kind of give you a perspective this rock here is about 30 foot tall so you can see that these were pretty big waves that we were dealing with and um, I was pretty safe in the area I was. I felt comfortable. I'd been to this location a number of times before. So I'm in Lightroom right now. And what I'm going to do is show you simply how I can combine these two images. So I've highlighted both of them. And I'm going to go to Edit 2, come all the way down here to the bottom where it says Open as Layers in Photoshop. And what this is going to do is it's going to go ahead and open up Photoshop for me but it's gonna put the two images into a layer stack. So that's just saving me some time of opening up each layer individually. And you might ask yourself, well, why isn't he processing both images first and then stacking them? Well, I'm gonna show you how we can just mask this in, treat it as a single file, and then go right into one of my favorite softwares I've been using, McFun's Luminar 2018. So if I come over here in the layer stack, you can see if I turn off the eye of the top picture, that is indeed my uh, crashing water on the bottom. If I turn it back on, that is uh, where I have the sun coming up over the Santa Lucia. If by, by a chance you had this and they were reversed, you could simply grab and just pull down or grab on this bottom layer, push up, and the two layers would reverse themselves. So real easy. But I want to uh, highlight the first layer Come down here to the bottom of the layer stack and add a white layer mask, which goes in as default. Now I come all the way over to the left side to the tool palette, and I want to find my brush. And if you forget where your brush is at, just tap B for brush. And then you come down to the, the color palette down here. And you may have different colors, so you could go ahead and click D for default. That'll always get you back to black and white. And because my mask is white, I'm going to need black over the top. So I'm going to simply tap on my X key and get black to come over the top. Lastly, I'm going to come up to opacity and make sure that's turned up to 100%. Tap my right bracket key, and I'm going to start painting in this ocean. And I'm just going to do this kind of quick, real down and dirty, just to sort of give you the idea. Now I'm getting up into the, to the area that I would call my transition zone up here. So typically I would drop that down by a full stop, meaning we go from 100 to 50. 
and I'll start painting in there and actually you know that's taking out quite a bit so I'm gonna hit command or control Z to get me back bring it down to about 30 now I'll go through and paint it and lower my brush size with the left bracket key and come on over here and kind of clean up the sky a little bit and you know we can always come back in and here and take some out um, this rock's going to need some attention, so uh, we'll go through that. Uh, right now, we're just trying to get things kind of balanced up. And um, this is looking pretty good. I think what we're going to do now is I'm going to come under layer here, and I'm just going to say flatten image, and it'll turn it into a background layer. Now we're ready for luminar, so I'm going to come under filter. I'm going to go to McFun and come down to luminar 2018. By the way, if you're interested in purchasing Luminar, just go to my website, www.donsmithphotography. On the home page on the left side, you'll see my links go to affiliates and discounts. And um, you can uh, go right through there and I'll get a couple of bucks out of the sale and uh, you'd help me out on that end. Now, Luminar, there's a lot of different ways I can work. I can come over here and grab uh, individual filters. And one that I'm going to show you I really love is this Accent AI. It stands for Artificial Intelligence. And it really is just going to kind of go in and figure this shot out on its own, which is really kind of a cool way of, of doing it. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take that one out of there. I think on this shot... I really like Image Enhancer better, and that's down here in the preset category. So if I click on categories, you'll see all these different categories come up. I can create my own and add them, but I'm going to stay in the basic, come down to Image Enhancer, and look at that. It does quite a good job with me just clicking on it. But here's the big caveat, and this took me a little bit of figuring to figure out what was going on. I don't always want to work at 100%, so I come back over here on the layer stack, and if I turn this down, it kind of gets almost where it grays out. It doesn't look really good. So I'm going to come back here to custom and I'm going to go to clear workspace. Now, before adding my image enhancer, this time I'm going to come up and click on the plus button and I'm going to use a new adjustment layer. Now this is going to throw all of these adjustments on one single layer for me. Come back over and now even within the uh, preset itself, we have the um, opacity slider. So you have it in two locations. I really like this at 100%. It's a great starting point. So I'm going to leave it alone. So that would be step number one. And now I'm going to come back up and click onto a new adjustment layer. And just for kicks, I haven't tried this. I'm going to click on the artificial intelligence because this rock looks you know, a little bit too dark for me. So I'm just going to keep my eye on that rock as I tug this open and look at how artificial intelligence goes in and kind of reveals all of this. Now, we can make a claim that this is getting a little too bright. No worries because um, it's on its own layer, layer number two up here, and there's a little brush. And I make sure I click on brush. And as I bring the brush in, you see it has a plus symbol bullseye in the middle. So I'll just click on the Alter Option key to hold that into a minus. And I'll just kind of brush out the effect right in this area where I think it got a little too bright in there. Um, really, now that's looking pretty good. I can turn the eyeball on and off uh, to check on it. Sorry, I did that kind of quick. Let's turn it off, turn it back on. And now you're starting to see the effect of where we're going. I think lastly, and I'm just kind of doing this quick to give you a sense, I think this water uh, looks a little too aqua. So I'm gonna go ahead and add another adjustment layer. And you can see I have certain filters over here I've turned to orange and to do that, just hold over, you know, let's say color contrast, click on the uh, little star and that will highlight it. All it does is kind of gives you a favorite palette where my eye can work quickly. Um, I think I'm going to come down to, oh gosh, let's see here. This guy here, Brilliance and Warmth under Creative. And what I like about this is there's two sliders. Oh, you know, um, this one is kind of adding to the vividness of the scene right there. And this is my warmth. And I, uh, you know, this is really not the one I wanted to go to, but that actually did do a good job. Here's the guy I wanted to come to, Split Color Warmth. So we'll leave this one in. I could always take them out, clicking on that, that little X key. Here's the one I really want to go to, warm and cold tones. 
This one, I could really get warm, but we've already done that in the layer above. I want to cool it down a little. Get that water and that sky looking a little more bluish and not so much aqua. And look at that. Just in one simple slider, we have it all. Um, you know, we have a histogram. You can see I'm blowing my highlights a little. So I could come in here on a highlight shadow. And let me X that out first. I really, you know, always come over here and add an adjustment layer. I think that's really important, at least in my workflow. Now I'll come back to highlight uh, sliders. And I'm going to hold down the Alter Option key, similar to in uh, Lightroom or Photoshop. And we're just going to bring down that a little bit. Let's check our shadows. Actually, my shadows are looking really good. I think that's right on the mark. So I would go ahead now and click Apply. And I could go back into Photoshop. I got a couple of little dust bunnies here. I would uh, do my cropping. I'd take out this little uh, telephone pole there. All the basic stuff we do in processing. Uh, but I wanted to show you just how really easy this stuff is getting to be. Even um, this was captured with my new Sony a7R 3 by the way. I don't think I mentioned that. And for those of you who are coming over from the a7R 2 it's the same sensor, same back, lit, back illuminated sensor, but all new uh, parts inside the camera, the processors and everything else that go into to working with that sensor. And we're getting about 15 stops of light out of this sensor now. So, uh, that's what Sony claims. And after working with this camera for a couple months, I've got to agree. It's pretty amazing. It's true 16 bit. You get a lot more colors, a lot more tones. And uh, it's just a really amazing camera. And you know, that's why I was out there without my grad filters. I just don't find myself carrying them around much anymore. If I get in a scene like this, it's real easy to take a couple of shots and put them together. So I hope this has helped you out. Uh, I hope you go grab your own copy of Luminar. It's in the area of about $60. Uh, they were actually, McFun had a, um, a special going right before Christmas that I had put out. Uh, on my Facebook page. So always check on my Facebook page. I'm usually posting something almost every day of the week. And that's where you'll find a lot of those bargains when I see something like that. This is Don Smith. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. Um, if, you, if you know of anybody that would like to get on this monthly mailing e-newsletter e and learn right along with the rest of us here, let me know. If you have any topics you might be interested in, let me know. You can always send me an email, don at donsmithphotography.com. I'm off to Utah in a few days. We'll be there till the end of the month, uh, but I look forward to hearing from you. Till then, we will see you next month. Get out and shoot and have yourself a blast.